Welcome back, Reader Pops. Today is a very exciting video. Basically, we are halfway through the year. So far, I've read about 56, 57 books, I believe. And some booktubers have put together this tag that is named the Mid-Year Freakout Tag. And I'm just gonna be kind of talking about my favorite books, my worst books, books I was surprised by, disappointed by, prettiest covers, stuff like that. And I thought it would be even more fun if I like stood in front of my bookshelf and then searched for the book as I read the question. So let's just get started. I feel like I'm doing a 2012 YouTube tag. I actually don't remember when tags were the biggest, but the first question is just what's the best book you've read so far? So I feel like at this point, I'm the spokesperson of this book. I want everyone to read it. And that is Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. It's a young adult romance book and I just love it. I feel like young adult romance is super hit or miss. And this book is better than like any adult romance book I've read even. It's got playlists. It's got rom-com quotes on each chapter. And it has my favorite characters, Wes and Liz. Like, if you watch any of my videos, you've heard about this so i'm not going to talk about it for too long but also i just read this like two days ago and i'm gonna need everyone to read this this is the house across the lake by riley sager this is a thriller slash mystery book and it was the first riley sager book i ever read he's pretty big in the thriller space i am absolutely obsessed with this book i think it's gonna make it up into my like top three fiction books ever which has not happened in such a long time i loved everything about this book i loved the main girl's point of view that we're following i love the setting of being in this this lake town where she's just like alone and she's spying on the house across from her. It was so gripping. There were so many plot twists, literally the crazy plot twists you've ever heard about in your life. I was like keeping Ryan updated on all the plot twists and even he was enjoying hearing what was happening next. Yeah, this book is insane. I don't know why on Goodreads it has such mixed reviews. So many people don't like it and I just, I don't under, I don't get it. I loved everything about this book. So I highly recommend it. I want everyone to read it so that I can see your opinions as well. The next question is the best sequel you've read so far. I would definitely have to be the second book in the Cruel Prince trilogy because this is a young adult fantasy series and I read the first book, The Cruel Prince, and I was like, what in the world is all the hype about this series? I don't get it. Three stars. And then I continued on to the sequel, The Wicked King, and this book is five stars. This book is honestly a six star for me. I have a special little bracket called the six star of like special books in my heart, which it immediately made me want to read the third book which is also five stars. Because of the two books at the end, it made this whole series a five star series for me. And especially this book. This one is my favorite one, which is so unheard of, I feel like, for a trilogy for the middle book to be your favorite. But there's just something in this book. I love it so much. Absolutely the best sequel ever. I tell everyone who wants to read this series that you cannot judge it until you get to the second book because I, I was so confused when I read The Cruel Prince. I was like, why does this book have so much hype? That makes zero sense. And then I understood. So definitely that. Next up is genre you've been loving slash reading the most and I think this is a very fun question added by books and Lala because I actually just recently about two weeks ago started reading thrillers and by that I mean I went from reading basically all romance to now I've just been binge reading thrillers this week the past two weeks I've read like seven already this month and a lot of them are underneath the tv because they're new books to me so yeah house across the lake is my favorite so far new release you haven't read yet but want to I have pre-ordered Carrie Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins Reid because I really liked One True Loves by her. This book was a five-star read by her. I've also read Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid and Daisy Jones and the Six. So I don't even know what Carrie Soto is back is about, but the cover is beautiful and I've given two of her books five stars so far. And then the third book in the Inheritance Game series, I think comes out very soon. So I'm going to read that when it comes out. Which book was the biggest disappointment? Um, Let's see. Okay. I feel like Sarah Dessen was a young adult romance author who was super hyped up to me in my comments But I think it's because people discovered her when they were younger And so people would comment like oh my gosh Sarah Dessen raised me I love her books and I read the rest of the story by her and I just did not like it Like it took me so long to get through this book because every scene was so detailed I was like, how is she still describing the same exact scene right now? I am so bored to tears and like I don't even know if I could understand being 13 and being obsessed with her books But I've also heard that this one is not her best that I should read a lot for the ride or something, but I just honestly, I don't think Sarah Dessen is for me. Also, I read this for reading five books out of my comfort zone. This is Someone Who Will Love You in All Your Damaged Glory, and they're kind of like comedic short stories about love written by the guy who wrote Bojack Horseman. And people on Instagram hype this book up to no end. It's very aesthetically pleasing. It's cool on the inside as well, and it's short stories, something I've never read. But I, I genuinely just don't get the hype about this book. I got to page 133, and it was just like pulling teeth to get through it. I 
don't know if I want to finish it because I just don't feel like I would ever recommend this to someone. And it's not like it's a bad book. It had me laughing multiple times. I just don't have that feeling of like absolutely loving it. Like I saw so many people experience. So that reminds me, I need to take the, my bookmark out of this one because I'm probably not going to finish this. Cheers. Next question. Biggest surprise. This one is a fun question. I feel like a lot of things are a surprise to me this year because I tried to go outside of my comfort zone and I was successful quite a few times. So I would say the first surprise was Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney because I owned three of her books and then I got scared off from reading her because people either are obsessed with her writing or they literally give it one star and absolutely hate her. And I just had no idea where I was going to be. And then I gave this book a 4.5 stars and I definitely understand the hype. So Mary Jane by Jessica. Jessica Anya Blau. This is just a literary fiction, which I never pick that up ever. I need it to be fantasy or romance or thriller. And this is just like a women's fiction coming of age in the 1970s. And you're following this 14 year old main character. And honestly, I couldn't even understand what this book was about from reading the synopsis over and over again. But then I read it and it's just so fun. The setting is amazing. And this is a book that you read just because you love the characters so much. And I just, I gave this five stars, which was so unexpected for me. And then also The Hunting Wives by May Cobb was a thriller mystery that I picked up not really expecting much and I gave this five stars as well and it's super out of my comfort zone it's more so like a it's not like a scary thriller or mystery or anything like that it's kind of like mean girls if there was some weird crap going on. This book actually felt very similar to Bunny by Mona Awad, which is a horror book, but it just gave the same vibes of like this almost cult-like mean girls group. And then once the main character actually becomes involved in it, she realizes they are doing way sketchier stuff than she thought. So this was so good. I loved it. Favorite new author. That would have to definitely be Miss Lynn Painter, the one who wrote my favorite book this year. But she also sent me an advanced reader's copy of her new book coming out in November. It's another young adult romance. It's called The Do-Over. And and I was absolutely shocked to read this and also give it five stars because I just thought that I've hyped up this book so much even to myself that nothing could compare, nothing could live up to it and that I was gonna read her next book and just compare it the whole time to better than the movies. But no, this one stood on its own from page one. I absolutely loved it and they're not comparable. Like in my head, these are both equally like six star books to me and that just goes to show it is really her writing that I love and she's done it twice now. So any young adult romance that Lynn Painter writes will be an auto buy for me. That is definitely for sure. Also, the covers are so cute. You cannot deny. Newest favorite character. Ooh. Okay, honestly, I'm probably gonna have to say Belly from the Summer I Turned Pretty series, which so many people say that Belly was so annoying to them in the series. I don't remember feeling annoyed with her. If anything, I felt annoyed with one of the brothers in the third book, if you know what I mean. I don't think, I forget if we get told that she's half Asian, half white, but I kind of just felt like I could relate to her. Like I kind of felt like I was just reading about, not myself as in like the plot of the book, but just, I guess ethnicity wise, but I, I'm not even really 100% sure. Like if they say, but yeah, I don't know. It was the first time I read a series where I actually was like, oh, I see myself most closely in this main character. So probably Belly because her name is also really cute. A book that made you cry. This is really funny. Probably the book that made me cry the absolute hardest, which is honestly embarrassing, is The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black, the third book in the Cruel Prince trilogy. It's technically called the Folk of the Air trilogy, but I get confused when the series has a different name than the first book. It doesn't matter, but I absolutely sobbed in this book and I don't want to like say anything because I don't want to spoil it. And me saying that I sobbed does not spoil this because I was not expecting anything that happened in this book. I was crying so hard reading this, which is so embarrassing because if you've read it, you know why I was crying. So this one made me sob. The next question is book that made you happy. The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams is probably the happiest book on my shelf. This is an adult romance, but it's closed door, meaning there's like no explicit scenes in it. And the way that she writes her books are just like cupcakes, butterflies, sprinkles, just unicorns and fairies are in this book. There's nothing, no heavy topics. Everything in this world is just light and fluffy and like ridiculous and just happy. Like if you've read a scary thriller or something, I would definitely read one of Sarah Adams books. I keep her in my mind. I wanna read some of her other books if I ever read like a thriller that is scarier than I thought it would be. I'm definitely gonna pick up one of her books because they're just pure happiness. Most beautiful book you've bought so far. In my opinion, Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau is the prettiest cover. I don't know what it is. I just love this picture and like the grain and the, the colors on this are just insane. I love it. But I bought the cloth bound version of Pride and Prejudice from Barnes and Noble. And it's the first in my collection, maybe I'll have a collection, I don't really know. So I feel like I have to say this one because it is the most fun to touch. Okay, the last question is just, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? 
which is such a broad question because I don't really think in terms of like, what do I need to read? I feel like I don't really pressure myself. The only books on my mind right now are the ones that I have recently bought, which is in my July TBR video. Yeah, I don't really know. Basically all the books I'm thinking of right now are in my July TBR. So I'm gonna read those. I'm gonna read any good thriller recommendations if you have them in the comments below. But that is it for this video. I hope you found a new book from it and you can keep up with me on Instagram or TikTok or on my main channel where I also post book videos sometimes. So yeah, I'll see you guys somewhere else on the internet. Bye.